Hello and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. I am Zarkoon, and today I've got a video review or impressions video of the Tier 5 Royal Navy Cruiser HMS Leander. And to begin with, we're going to look at this overview page here. The Leander, a new generation of light cruiser designed to serve as a scout both with a squadron and independently, in contrast to her predecessors, the ship's main advantage was that her guns were placed in gun turrets, and I can tell you indeed that it is that the guns being placed in gun turrets is an advantage over the previous ship in the line, the Emerald. Both of these ships have both of those ships have eight guns, the Emerald and the Leander, but the Leander with the guns in turrets has, you can see, four turrets, two guns in each turret, meaning it can get all eight guns on target. The Emerald, you couldn't do that. It also had eight guns, but they weren't in turrets, and two of them were placed off to the sides of the ship on the wings on either side of the ship, so at any given time you could really only get seven of them on target. So yes, a little bit of a improvement over the Emerald. Uh, the ship also had stronger AA defenses, not that those matter, and supposedly better armor protection, although it is still quite squishy. Uh, pros up there, or cons, or whatever they're called, sequential torpedoes, which can be launched one by one, just like all the other British cruisers and the British destroyers. A flare for piercing, which means it's equipped with AP shells only. No surprise there, all the British cruisers are equipped with AP shells only, except, I guess, the Belfast. And it is the first in the tier to have this greater heal, so the repair party restores even severe damage. So most repair parties can only restore, like, I don't know, 10% of what's considered heavy or severe damage. Like Citadel hits, I'm not sure, but it sounds like this one can repair a little bit more of that kind of damage too. If we look at the loadout here, we'll see the heal replenishes hit points at a rate of 143 points per second and lasts for 28 seconds. Of course, the Leander comes with the British cruiser smoke. It only lays smoke for 15 seconds, so you have to be going pretty slow in order to not outrun the smoke cloud and not be concealed. you got to be careful when deploying this consumable on these British cruisers. Smoke screen dispersion time, 99 seconds. That's how long the smoke lasts, so that's about a minute and 39 seconds. Pretty good. Reload time of 228 seconds, which is just over 3 minutes, I believe. Alright, and now we are going to get into the detailed stats page of this ship here. So first thing we're going to look at is survivability. The ship comes with 28,700 hit points, which is at the lower end of the tier with the light cruisers Nuremberg for Germany and La Galissonaire for France. These three ships, the Nuremberg, Leander, and Galissonaire, they are all light cruisers. At tier 5, some of the tech trees, a couple of them, begin to diverge into heavy cruiser territory, and that starts, of course, with the Japanese Aoba and American Pensacola. Artillery. Got a main battery of eight 152mm guns, firing range of 14.6 kilometers on my build here with Bruce Fraser. Not too bad. We'll take a look at him after we look at these stats. Reload time, 7.5 seconds, which is second best at the tier behind the Nuremberg. The next closest is, of course, the Laga at 9 seconds, and both the Aoba and Pensacola, being the heavy cruisers that they are, have reload times in excess of 10 seconds. Max AP shell damage on these thing, on this thing is uh, 32,000, or 30... 3,255, 32,000, oh my god, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Uh, 3,255, though, which is less damage by about a 1,000 than the Nuremberg, and a couple less points, actually, than the Galissonaire, which is rather interesting, I think. Torpedoes, it's got eight 533mm torpedoes, uh, two torpedo launchers, one on either side of the ship with four torpedo tubes each. 
they do a max damage of 15,433, which is the second best at the tier behind the Japanese Aoba, kind of like the Emerald was the second best at tier 4 behind the Japanese Furutaka. But what do you expect? Japanese torpedoes are fantastic. The torps have a range of 8.4 kilometers. They are outranged by the Aoba, which has a range of 10. Laga has a range of 9. And the Leander beats the Nuremberg's torpedo range. The Nuremberg can only fire torpedoes out 6 kilometers. Torpedo speed, 61 knots, which is pretty much comparable to everything else at the tier. Maneuverability, max speed of 34.1 knots, which is the second fastest at the tier on my builds here behind the Aoba. Although the Galissonaire with its speed boost is probably a little bit faster than this, but without the speed boost it's actually a little bit slower than the Leander is. 640 meter turning circle radius here, one of the better ones at the tier, and 6.3 second rudder shift time, which is decent, uh, of course outclassed on my build by the Aoba by about 2 seconds. Concealment, 9.9 .9 kilometer sea detectability, which is by far the best at the tier. Alright, so let's look at my commander, the guy who's feeding into this build. And we'll take a look here. We got level 11 Bruce Frazier with Mikawa, or I'm sorry, with Yamamoto and Mikawa as inspirations. Got the Piercer skill because I do have a rather low level Yamamoto, so I've switched to the Piercer skill in order to increase the penetration multiplier along with the punch through skill. Got uh, torpedo range here and precision of the main battery guns here and for the legendary trait fully packed in order to give us an extra consumable on everything which is great because we want as many smoke screens as we can get. Alright, now that that's out of the way we'll jump into some gameplay and take a look at how the ship plays in battle. Okay, so we're going to be on North Domination Mode in the Tier 5 Leander. And let's talk a little bit about this ship. So, I think I said the range of the ship, the range of the ship's main guns was decent. Actually, I think it's a rather short. It's only 14 point something kilometers on my build here could get it up to 15 if I swapped out the first skill on the first line of Bruce Frazier's list of skills. I've got it, you saw earlier, I've got that one that buffs the AP penetration values, but the other one that extends the range, if you swap it out for that, I think you can get up to 15 and a half kilometers or so. So it's a rather short range. And the ship, of course, much like the Emerald before it and the Danae, is pretty squishy. You can potentially be one-shot killed by a battleship in this ship if you aren't careful. So you don't want to get too close to enemy battleships. You don't want to necessarily get too close to anything. But the range again, is rather short, so you kind of have to get close, especially to enemy cruisers, because I don't know, maybe you guys will notice this when you're playing down this line here, but for me, it could just be because I don't have the AP penetration values buffed as much as they could be with a rather low-level Yamamoto as an inspiration, but it seems to me that the penetration on these AP shells drops off significantly at range. So if I'm shooting a cruiser at a range of, I don't know, a range in excess of, let's say, 8 kilometers, then I find that I'm not striking those citadel hits at ranges like that, even if the cruiser is completely broadside. It could just be my aim is terrible but I don't think my aim is that atrocious and I think it's because the AP just sort of drops off 
at range. At close range, of course, this cruiser's AP can absolutely shred and destroy other cruisers, and it's got no problem in dealing tons of damage to destroyers because of the excellent characteristics of the short-fused British AP. You do get actual penetrations when you hit destroyers, and you really have no problem. You don't miss shooting HE at those things at all. Now, against enemy battleships, you'll notice that we approached this island and we kind of waited for the rest of our team to spot the enemy. What you need in order to survive in this ship is intelligence, and I don't mean the kind of intelligence that prevents you from being a dumbass and yellowing out in front of the whole enemy team. You really shouldn't do that either. <laughs> but you need to know where the enemy is on the map. And once it was established that most of the enemy that spawned in front of this alpha cap was heading the other way, I felt comfortable in pushing in. I can deploy a smoke screen here and I can secure this cap for my team, which is going to help us in terms of winning and also help gain me some valuable XP for grinding. It's not all about high damage in these cruisers, it's about getting experience and getting points and doing what you can to help your team win. So in domination mode that means capturing capture points or defending them from the enemy. And now we are able to lay down a smoke screen, get some fire on this New York here. We're doing some decent damage to him, but you can only really get any damage on these battleships with this AP if you hit him in the superstructure. And you can see that, you know, what we're doing is significant. We've only been shooting at this New York, and we've only been shooting for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And we've already taken 12,000 hit points off the guy. Almost 13,000, so that's like a good armor-piercing salvo from a battleship. And battleships can only fire, what, 25, 30 seconds? That's how long their reload is. So in the same amount of time, now we've done 14k damage on that guy. So the damage does add up. It is significant. And of course we've got this Pensacola, who appears to not have realized we were in here capping, so we hit him right off the bat with a citadel, followed it up with a nice armor-piercing salvo, and he's down to half health now. He is turning away, and he's going to angle at us. So, you know, if you're in a cruiser and you're facing this thing and you angle, you can drastically mitigate the effectiveness of their AP. You can still get penetrations through the side armor when these cruisers are, you know, more steeply angled or coming at you bow on. You can still get those penetrations, I think, but a lot of the times your shells are going to bounce, especially with more heavily armored cruisers, so you also need to sort of aim at the superstructure on these angled cruisers too in order to get consistent damage. And you see there that takes off about 1600 hit points from that Pensacola, that's okay. He is turning away, he does, I think maybe he thought he was going to enter the cap and contest it, but he's given up now. He's almost down to no health, and we have secured the A capture point all by ourselves. So. These cruisers, again, I think, with their smoke screens, are quite effective at contesting capture points. However, I do think that these are very much, at least in terms of the Emerald and the uh, Leander here, they are very much support cruisers and they benefit from close team support. So, well, we got this Omaha coming around, he's next to go, there we go, one shot, two citadels. He's dead, and that was pretty easy. Anyway, I think these are very much support ships. All cruisers are essentially sh support ships, but it's more pronounced on this thing here. Not that you can't have decent games solo, or high damage games solo. You can have both of those if you're playing solo. But I think these cruisers would drastically benefit from being in a division, especially since they have these, you know, rather long duration smoke screens. If you can get into a division with another cruiser that fires HE and you can smoke the two of you up, pop your hydro to be aware of any incoming torpedoes, you might have a recipe for some nasty, nasty destruction there. So, good support ships. And you definitely want to support your destroyers in this ship and your other cruisers. And it's very effective at doing all of that. Now, 
the ship is squishy, just like the rest of the ships so far down the British cruiser tech tree line. It is squishy. It can easily be killed by enemy battleships. They should have no problem dealing with the Leander, especially at close range. The only thing that will save you from being hit by enemy battleships and getting killed is smart positioning and being rather conservative. So you noticed I've been keeping the cover around me in between me and as many enemies as possible so that I can only ever have hopefully one enemy ship returning fire to me. And we have taken some chunks of hit points off that enemy Leander out there. So this is a ship where you really need to be aware of the enemy's position on the map. You need to be aware of all the cover around that you can utilize and you need to utilize that cover and your really excellent concealment for the tier as effectively as possible if you want success. And you see there we do get a citadel hit on that Leander from a range of 8 kilometers. That I think is about as far as it gets in terms of effectiveness. Farther than that I find it difficult to get citadel hits on cruisers but we've run aground here, obviously completely intentional. We did need to shoot at this Icarus, and we'll see demonstrated the effectiveness of the AP shells against destroyers. That first hit takes off almost half of his health, second hit reduces him to nothing, and our torpedoes do hit and kill the battleship, so that's nice. So I picked this game because it does show the characteristics of these AP shells against battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Hopefully that gives you a good picture of what to expect. And the game here is just about over. So you'll notice that this, again, isn't that much of a high damage game. I'd say this is pretty average game for this ship, and that's okay. That's what I'm trying to show you here. But it is a pretty high XP game. So we'll take a look at that here on the battle results screen. I think we almost ended up with 3,000 base XP, 2,700, I believe. So, yep, there it is. Well, if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Got a lot of World of Warships Legends content coming all the time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.